then you get to high school and you become a McDonald's All American, mm -hmm. which kind of puts you on on the traje trajectory to the NBA. Not everyone that becomes a McDonald's. Eighty five percent of McDonald's. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Eighty five. That's a great ratio. <laughs> Excellent ratio. <laughs> so you're now a superstar in high school, and then you go to Michigan, and that's when the Fab Five forms. These days, you occasionally see you know, five incredible freshmen. But back then, there was no such thing. It was really special. And, and the great thing about that opportunity to be a member of the Fab Five with Juwan Howard, not a head coach at University of Michigan, Chris Weber, Jimmy King, and Ray Jackson, is that coming from high school, for those that don't know, I went to Detroit Southwestern. That's one of the most legendary programs in the history of basketball. My high school coach, Perry Watson, is one of the greatest to ever do it. So my initial basketball sacrifice was, quote unquote, to go to Southwestern because I lived on the Northwest side and the school's in Southwest Detroit. So now you're committing basically to take almost the longest bus so the, the bus starts at 8 Mile. I'm getting on at 6 Mile. It ends at Fort Street. That's where the school is. All right? And so to play for Perry Watson in my freshman year, play JV. Howard Isley, now coaching at Michigan. Voshan Leonard. People before me, Anderson Hunt, Final Four MVP at UNLV. So many, Antoine Jobert, like legendary program. When I went there... I was like, I'm going to the league. And so for us to win a couple of city championships, PSL, state championships, we won national championship. So my senior year, going to Michigan, I'm like, all right, I have a chance to go to UNLV where Anderson Hunt start. I took a visit there. Go to Syracuse where Derek Coleman start. By the way, come home every year, giving me the long shorts. Planting the sea here, giving me the long shorts. I took a visit to Michigan State, Steve Smith. That's where he start. You pick a school based on where your big brothers are, and you say, somebody from Detroit went there and had success, maybe I can too. And I didn't wear number five in high school. As you know, I wore 42. The reason why I changed my number in college is because I was the fifth member to sign his letter of intent. That's how I got number five. And so to be able to join up and play with those guys, it was no egos. That's what allowed it to happen in the early 90s at a time where usually people was picking schools to try to go put in, put in work and go to the league. And you and Chris Weber had a long relationship already. Mm -hmm. So the first year, the Fab Five, with all freshmen, go to the NCAA championships. That is crazy. It's never happened before. <laughs> it never happened again. And you guys hated Duke. Yeah. Despised them. You actually called the black players at Duke house Negroes. <laughs> that was the young me speaking. Yeah. This was the inner city kid from Detroit that felt like I wasn't getting an opportunity based on my zip code and the, the, the financial standing of my family. But you were in a fairly high opportunity situation at that time, though, weren't you? I mean, you were going to the NCAA finals, you know, in a spectacular team. And, and, when, and when the season ended in April and May, I was right back in the hood. Mm, gotcha. Staying at my mother's crib that I grew up in. The same environment. The whole, the entire world gets to see me on the big stage, rocking the big shorts, black shoes, black socks. People naming their kids Jalen. That's now in the NFL or the NBA. People rocking the Harachis. Right back on the block. That made you bitter. Of course it did. <laughs> right, you kind of singled out Grant Hill, who came from a, a rich family, college-educated parents. I think his dad played professional sports. Yeah, Calvin Hill was a beast. Yeah, and you were just jealous of him, basically. Yeah, I was jealous. And so it's it's almost like 
uh, the movie Face Off. Uh, who is it? Uh, John Travolta and Nicolas Cage in that movie, right? Uh, or even like uh, another one, like Ricochet. I remember Denzel was in a movie kind of like that, where it was, where it's like you see somebody, you're 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 the you're the A or the B side, however you see it, and you see somebody that has all of the things that you want, and you ready for this, Vlad? And then you think they're soft because you grew up in a hood and you poor, right? This is what I learned a long time ago. Your haircut, how you wear your pants, how you speak, your appearance, that don't make you hard. And by the way, it don't mean nothing to be tough anyway. So we felt like that about them. We 13 and under at, in St. Louis playing AAUs. We scrapped up all of the money we could do to get our Patrick Ewing conductor um, Adidas to wear them as a team. They come running out there, rest in Virginia, full uniforms on, fresh kicks on, families in the stands. We like, we about to crush them, Detroit. Like, and we was up till three in the morning. They ran us, yep. beat us by 30, beat the brakes off of us. And I was like, Grant Hill, he about to be one of the greatest to do it. And if he not, so, like, people are compare, talking about Zion a lot this year, and I think he's going to be a terrific player. The best player, the most talented player ever at Duke is Grant Hill. The most accomplished player is Christian Leitner. And so the, I got a chance to play against those guys on the same team with Bobby Hurley and Coach K. So... We just felt a level of, I, I'm speaking for me, growing up from an, in an inner city environment, it, it, it was always, you know, how can I find a level of motivation? And so, yeah, playing against those guys, we said some things that were Im immature and irresponsible that came out in the documentary as we were speaking about our young selves. And now I have people looking at me like I'm 40-year-old man and I'm mad. I'm like, that was... That's what made the documentary great, is because we were honest. Right, because you called uh, Christian Leitner an overrated pussy. That's how we felt. Until you actually played him. Boom! <laughs> right? Like, he got game. Going baseline, dunking on us. He only went to four Final Fours. I know, right? Right? <laughs> only I mean, four. <laughs> right? Right? A couple of championships, a couple of most outstanding players. Like, again, as a trash-talking player, as somebody that needed to be irrationally confident to try to, you know, uh, get from the bottom of the ladder, you, you're gonna you're gonna have to rub you're gonna have to you're gonna have to uh, ruffle some feathers to sometimes get where you want to go.